Your stealth check fails, and the guards notice you. They begin to draw their weapons. What do you do? I put on my robe and wizard hat. Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. We kick things right into gear here, making the base for our mausoleum. You can see here I've got a piece of XPS foam, about a half inch thick, marked with uh, pen lines, and then uh, traced with a, a knife, and further again with a pen, um, adding a little bit of detail to the stone on the floor to give it some more uh, depth. I come back in afterwards and coat it with some black Mod Podge chosen style, such to give the foam some strength and to uh, protect the undercoat. I took a piece of MDF uh, and coated it in t Eileen's tacky glue using a small paint roller, and then decided to flock it using uh, cat litter to create a kind of pathway up the center for my graveyard base. This gave it a little bit more texture and differentiated that central walkway from the rest of the texture which would be done in a white craft sand which I got from my local Dollar Tree. After giving the base a liberal coating in black Mod Podge. Uh, I would come in with my uh, undercoat, which would be a uh, burnt umber, slightly watered down, and then a dry brush in pewter gray, and then coming in finally with a uh, granite gray. All of these colors I got from Walmart, and they were really cheap as far as craft paint goes, they're not bad. Next is the pewter gray, which I feel adds more of a earthy undertone to the gray than a dark gray does, and it does satisfy that two-toned gray that I like. However, I did try something different with the mausoleum, which you'll see later, trying to uh, bring out the different colors of the stones. Lastly, just coming in with the dry brushing of the granite gray. And now I'm going to start cutting out my pattern. This pattern I, I'm not making available, but you can easily remake it yourself in uh, anything like Publisher or Photoshop. I'm going to give credit below in the description to the actual uh, crafter who made the mausoleum that this is based on. I varied my design slightly. However, um, I feel he deserves all the credit because his was far more amazing than mine. I made all of the walls of the mausoleum uh, two pieces thick. The front of it was uh, the detail, the front detail is uh, two pieces thick so it can get some depth with the, the windows and the stonework. However, the reason his was two pieces thick was for the strength so that he could remove the roof from his. However, uh, I plan on using mine in a much different style, taking the whole building off the base rather than taking off the roof and leaving the walls. It's harder to play inside 
with the walls up than it is to play with the walls down, in this case, removed with the roof. So I just drew everything out with a pen, and this, this was pretty tedious, but in the end gave the best detail. just going to use a little bit of rolled up tin foil here to add texture and I did this on both sides of the walls uh, seeing as how they were going to originally follow the pattern uh, set forth in the uh, original tutorial I didn't realize that I wanted the roof to come off and separate from the walls until after I had already made this decision, so that's why it's included like this. You don't have to use double wall thickness all the way around, you really only need the double wall for the front. I added a course of uh, stones that were smaller to give it a little bit more of a natural appearance, to make it look like it was a, a manufactured wall rather than just a bunch of stones thrown together. Each wall is different than uh, the other and very unique which adds to the natural look of the building. And again with the texture, these these uh, roof, uh, the front and back of the roof here are just one piece of foam thick. And here we have sub-assembly. Gluing the top parts to the just one panel, but making sure they're aligned to the facade so that they don't uh, recess in the back or in the front and give an odd look to the shape of the building. If I had to do this double wall technique again, I likely would have removed one more side of the paper from one of the pieces of foam so that the paper in the middle wasn't as thick as it was here. I came in with some hot glue in the corners and reinforced the, the joints so that I knew the building was solid and it, it would have been fine otherwise, but I like to be sure. I've always used too much glue and too much tape. It's an obsession of mine. I think it's hilarious. Okay, now I'm going to fit the, the base roof panels, which were roughly ended, up, roughly ended up being about the size of my floor, minus about an inch in width. I kind of guessed at them, and they came out okay, but um, I found a formula to determine the actual uh, length of that size of the triangle which was uh, fairly easy. There's a website out there. If you search Google for calculating a triangle, you'll find it no problem. And then you just have to calculate half of the triangle, the height and the length of the base, and then you can get the exact length of that, uh, that face. Although I did like having this overhang. I did come in and try to round the corners to add uh, the continuation of the, the stonework around the side. And um, I added some reinforcement to the underside of the roof and some popsicle sticks to the front for support and to provide something for my door to sit in when the time came to add my door. Onto the roof. At this point, I should have probably put the, the roof crown on, the piece of paper, 
which I'm noticing here. So I actually had to remove that last stick that, I, that you just saw me put on. I apologize for my bald head to get under the camera here, but I had to uh, get in to do this work uh, in a fairly close manner because I didn't want to screw it up. I just scored along a piece of cardstock here so that it would fold easier. Just very lightly with my craft knife and um, folded it and stuck it on top of the roof here. That, that same stick was getting glued back so I didn't care that it ripped up some of the paper. It was going to be covered anyway. So I used that there to cover the roof and now at this point I realized I was going to be putting detail along the spine of the roof. I was going to be using popsicle sticks which I would later paint a metallic color, a gunmetal gray, metallic, and um, I didn't leave that top row off in order to fix those before putting it on. And I think that was a mistake because I ended up having to come back in with a drill and actually drill out small holes to put them in. You'll, you'll see here in a second where I uh, I actually put the pieces on and just decided to not do it that way and that's when I came in with the drill. All this wood that I'm using here is just coffee servers that I got from my local grocery store. Really cheap and really good source of wood. And these are the, the toothpicks that I'm using. They're just um, kind of uh, just Poked, pokey toothpicks, I don't know what to call them, but they're in the different styles. They're not square and they're not flat. They're just the, the round toothpicks, I guess you would call them. I tried gluing it right to the roof here and it just, it wasn't going to work. And I knew that, I knew that doing it, but I just did it anyway, just to prove it to myself that it wouldn't. And I just took it right off. Yeah, no, it wasn't going to work. I made, uh, I lost some of the footage here. I, this is the only shot of before I painted the four roof details. Um, they were just the same height as uh, in the previous video as the pillars for my gate and for my fences. Three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch by inch and a half. And then I put a 45 degree angle in the bottom and drew some bricks on the, around them. Poked a toothpick through, stuck them right to the roof. Easy. And now I'm just uh, slathering everything in a liberal coating of black Mod Podge before I move on to painting it. I'm undecided about these torches. I didn't know if I was going to use them. I still haven't put it on and it's been a week since I made the, the mausoleum. They came out alright. I found this uh, technique on the Hearst Arts forums or the Hearst Arts webpage. And it's fairly simple just using a wire nut and uh, a Q-tip with uh, some glue and a little bit of paint. Give everything, uh, the, giving the base a, a liberal wash of uh, black and brown to give it a little bit of a grungy look. And now I'm going to use my two tone gray for the base of the, the building, the pewter gray and the granite gray. And I'm just going to come in and paint all of the, the stone, leaving the roof details uh, alone for now. And I'll come back after and paint that a copper and a gunmetal gray metallic. Next I'm doing a dry brushing with the granite gray to bring out the, the, some of the details and highlights.
I decided I was going to try something new with the stonework on this. Um, painting the, the stones different colors to give them kind of a more natural look. Here I just came in with a, a khaki and uh, decided to paint random stones on every portion of the building that had stonework. Even the bricks on the roof details on the four corners. For my copper roof, I had originally envisioned kind of a, a tarnish that had just begun, like uh, the rain had dripped on it and dripped down. So I did a, a, I would say a moderate dry brushing. I didn't paint it on thick, but I dry brushed several times to get a, a look that left some of the black still coming through. Um, I wasn't very happy with it. Um, I would come back in thicker after. As you can see in these next couple of shots, I ended up liking just, I, I came in with a, yeah, like, I don't know, it must have been three or four dry brushings before I decided to just use, um, I would call it a wet dry brush, where it wasn't quite slathered on, but it was still not quite uh, dry either. And I hit the roof details with the metallic gunmetal gray, all of the spikes, and all of the, the wood around the, the roof and that piece of paper that I laid over, which you can see as a, a, has a layered technique, which I actually really liked. It gave the roof a little more detail, and I'm kind of wishing I had put more paper around underneath the wood to give it several layers of detail. After doing that, I um, I went in with some brown, just regular brown, and colored some more of the stones. I figured it would be better with two colors than one, and I was right. I liked it a lot better, and it gave it a lot more variation. Sometimes it pays to take a chance with a model. You can always go back over it with the, the color. That's why I like the acrylic craft paints, and that's usually why I water them down so they're not goopy, so you can go back over them if you have to. If it's too dark of a color, you have to go back over it in a black or something really dark first, but you can usually fill it in. It's very forgiving. Next I was going to put some rust on the, uh, the gunmetal gray, or the iron, as it would be. I tried to mix up my own rust color and it was horrible, it didn't work. So I ended up taking a uh, mixture of some uh, two colors. I used burnt umber mixed with uh, silver, just a little bit. I would dip the brush in the burnt umber, brush it off, dip it in the silver, brush it off, and get just the metal flakes from the silver mixed in with the burnt umber. And then I came in and I painted at the base of all the, um, the metallic bits to look like rainwater had not run rust down them. And then I would repeat the exact same thing with a lighter brown. My mixture, I had a very terrible yellow and a very terrible red that I got from the craft store and they just would not mix into an orange. Um, I didn't have any orange paint at the time of filming this, so that's what I was trying for, but the browns worked out good. Although I would have preferred a higher contrast to the copper. came in with the lighter brown, I just used more of a stippling technique, and um, that gave the appearance of a pitted rust, which I really liked.
I made a wash using some uh, Craft Smart Shamrock Green that I got from Michaels. I was going to continue with my theme of having the rainwater drip, so I was trying to make the, the wash drip down the side here by adding too much of it, and that really just did not look right. Um, in, in this uh, moment at the time of recording this voiceover, it occurs to me it would have been better to just paint that actual color on the entire roof and leave the copper out altogether, and it would have looked like a tarnished copper roof. And I noticed this the other day while I was out driving around my town and saw some of the old uh, colonial buildings that we have uh, with copper roofs. I eventually uh, settled for the fact that it was going to not look like that um, and just let it run down, paint it on a bunch, let it run, paint it on a bunch, let it run, and sopped up the pools at the bottom with a Q-tip. Because it did pool at the bottom of the roof detail, as you can see here. At the end of the day, I did achieve a grungy look, and you can tell it's supposed to be a copper roof. So that was good enough for me. And then we came in with the black wash and hit everything. Um, the stonework, the, the metal, just not the part that I washed with the green. We left that part out. Applying the, the wash after painting is so satisfying because that's when all the details start to come out. And I was just very liberal with it. I still uh, have yet to find a wash recipe that it really works for me. A lot of time, the color in between the cracks it just fades away, and that leads me to believe my mix is just not right. I still had some granny grating left over from when I made my tower. So uh, I had already had it painted because I painted up a bunch of it with the metallic. And for the door, you can just use my uh, door technique from third episode where I made my dungeon doors. The only thing is, is I didn't include the frame or the base and I used a little bit more uh, paneling to fit it into the gap in the popsicle sticks that I made. The rest of the detail was just applied after the door was glued in place. I used a small jewelry ring uh, to if, affix it to the the latch so that the latch would actually move and I like this technique a lot better I'll be using it from now on in all of my doors and there you have it all of the detail there uh, you can actually see some of the detail uh, melted away and that's because when I finished the piece I sprayed too much top coat on it and it ended up eroding it away hence you, the blue lines that you can see where I drew with the pen so I had to do a little bit of a repaint on this. Um, I just redid all the gray and the brown and the wash, and then redid the top coat much lighter. Uh, Black Magic Craft, uh, Jeremy, and uh, the Terrain Tutor have excellent tutorials on how to spray foam, and I would suggest you look on their channels to uh, get pointers from them because that's where I got my information. And here you can see the repaint. Um, it turned out alright, it gave the appearance of the stone being corroded, which was fine. Okay, here we have the, the finished set. All the pieces set up went together very well. You can see you can remove the roof and access the floor beneath. Much easier than trying to reach over the top of some walls. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit the like button and leave a comment below if you found my videos useful. Be sure to check out my Instagram, where I post all kinds of photo updates on current projects and general goings on here at HQ. If you're not already a subscriber, please do, I'd love to have you. Feel free to check out my other videos. New videos are posted on Sunday at noon Eastern Standard Time. If 
you feel like I'm doing a good job and want to support my efforts here, please consider becoming a subscriber on Patreon. Every dollar I make there will go back into making this channel better and help fund new projects and ideas. I hope to see you around the table. Bye for now.